Hello and welcome to our second Wings video on Google SketchUp. In the first one we learned how to make simple 3D shapes. This one we're going to learn how to move and rotate and copy and manipulate these shapes. What I'd like you to do is to just take a minute at the most just drawing two different 3D shapes using the techniques you learned in the first video. I've drawn a cube and then use the push-pull tool to push a triangle through the middle to make a hole and then I've done a cylinder draw on a circle on top and use the push-pull tool to make another cylinder. When working with complex shapes, sometimes we want to be able to select the whole thing and move the whole thing around without just one corner or one little bit being selected. There's two ways we can do this. The first way is called making a group. Firstly, you need to select everything you want to be in that group, which you can either drag a box around or you can triple click, then right click and go to make group. Now it doesn't look like anything's happened but you'll notice if we click on it it selects the whole thing whereas the one that hasn't been made a group we click on it it selects just that part. We can still work on the individual parts we just need to double click you can see that this gets grayed out and now we can select and modify the individual parts of it. Clicking away or pressing escape will take you back. If you ever want to unmake a group to turn it back into just individual parts. Click on it, right click and go to explode. The second one we're going to do is to make our second shape into a component. So we'll select it all, right click, make component. It's a little bit fancier this one so it's going to ask for a name. The way components work is if you're going to have a lot of repetition of something. You're going to have a lot of versions of the same thing in your model. For instance, a small scale version of that might be a chair where it's got four legs that are exactly the same, but you only want to make it once and then copy it around and you'll have your four legs being exactly the same. The beauty of a component is if you edit one of the legs, all of the other ones will automatically update to be exactly the same. So you don't have to do everything four or five or six or however many times. Okay, onto our actual tools for manipulation. The first one we're going to look at is called the resize tool. And you'll find up here. I actually call it the scale tool. You need to click on what you want to scale first, then on the tool, and you'll see we get these little handles here where you can stretch it out, squash it in. If you go from one of the middle ones, it makes it a little bit more even. But in general you get the idea. If you go from a middle one and drag through, you can actually reverse something out the other side. As always, down in the corner we have our little bar here. And say I wanted this to be twice as tall, I would start to drag, type in 2, hit enter, and it's twice as tall. Maybe I want this one to be half as wide, so while holding down the mouse 0.5, enter, and it's exactly half as much. Okay, our second tool is called the Move tool, and it's just the four arrows here. Once again, we've got to select our object first, and then click the Move tool. Now this lets us, as we would expect, move it around the place. Sometimes it's a little bit tricky to get something to go where you want, so you might select it and then start from a fixed point like the origin and then up the blue line that way you know you're only moving it up and down instead of into the background like it's trying to do there jumping back and forth. If we come inside our group by double clicking and we select just a part of it and then go to the move tool we'll find that we can move just that line which is a really good way to make shapes quickly by distorting them. But I'll hit escape to get out of that when we're moving something, we can actually make a copy at the same time. So if I collect, select my group, click Move. Once I start to move, you'll see down the bottom for me it says Control equals Toggle Copy. It'll, it might say something slightly differently on a Mac, but it will always give you the instruction. If I press that button, all of a sudden it leaves the original one behind. And 
a second one appears. Now we can make more than one copy. If I want, I can type in an exact length, so I might do one meter, 1,000 millimeters. Now before I press anything else, I might want 10 of them, so I press 10, X for 10 times, hit enter, all of a sudden I've got 10. I can still change the gap in between, I might want it to be 0 0.5 meters, it puts them closer, I might want, no, I decide I'd like it to be a full 2 meters apart. I could change all of this, maybe I only want 5 or 2. As long as I haven't gone to another tool, I can keep on typing in either 2x or something x and different measurements, and it will make all of this. Once I go into another tool, I lose the ability. The next thing I'm going to do is rotating, and that is up the top here with the other tools. So I'm going to click on my component, and I'm going to click rotate. Now, first thing it wants to do is to put down the protractor so I know how I'm going to be rotating. I click it and it places it on the spot. I click where I want it to start. I click where I want it to end and it rotates around. As always I can type in a specific angle so if I type in 90 it moves at 90 degrees or I might want it to flip around to 180 so I type in 180 it goes to 180 degrees. You can also copy while you're rotating. Say I wanted a set of these going around in a circle around the middle from this center point. I click on my component, I click rotate and down the bottom once again it says toggle copy so I press the button and I'm going to set up the center of my rotation at the origin, give it a starting point and I might want this one out here 60 degrees just like before, I can hit a number X for the amount of time, so I might want 5 times, 5X, enter, and it makes 5 for me. Just like before, I can change the angle, 45, 60 again, 90, 35, whatever I like, and I can change the amount. As long as I haven't clicked to go onto another tool, it will always work out well for me. Okay, so that's a full set of these. I might actually delete my grouped one. Now here is the beauty of a component. Say I've got a pattern like this and I've decided I want to change the height of this. I don't want to have to go and do it six times. So I double click on any one of them, make my change and you can see on all the other ones it's copying and updating for me. Out of it you can see that it's done it for all of them. That will only happen if you make it a component. Making something a group will make it easier to click and move around like a component, but it won't update all of your changes for you. One other one I'll show you is the mirror tool. To do this we first select all of our things. If you can find this icon, that's the one for mirror selection, otherwise it's under plugins, mirror selection. And what it wants us to do, just like when we do a plane, it wants us to pick three points. So you want to pick one in the middle, one to the side, and one up. And you can see it's made a mirror. It asks if you want to get rid of the original one. We don't in this stage, so we click no. You can see that those three points, I was giving it a flat area, in this case, straight down the middle of them, to do a mirror, to do a copy with everything mirrored the other way and it makes it very quick to build up repetitive shapes with that type of thing. Last thing I'd like you to do to finish off this exercise is to put your name in it once again with 3D text somewhere where it's visible since you know to how to now you might even like to change the size and the positioning of it. Set it up somewhere obvious where you can see it, just like we did last time. Firstly, save as and call it exercise 2 dash your name. Save it. And then just like we did last time, go to file, export, 2D graphic, 
save it exactly the same way, exercise2 dash your name and upload that one to McMoodle.